On the other side of this wall, 10 players are about to compete in a game that they will never forget. But what they don't know is that four other players are about to join them. Who will let their baggage weigh them down and who will rise to the top and be the ultimate top of the totem pole? Welcome to the Totem Pole, season three. I grew up wanting to be on Survivor or Big Brother. Follow your dreams. When I grow up, I want to be director. I played at home, online, and tried everything I could to get my family and friends to play. But fast forward to 2018. In college, I created a competition reality game called The Totem Pole. I heard that Wesley got you guys playing a really cool game called The Totem Pole. We played on my university's campus every Friday night with friends. Players had to compete in competitions and avoid being the bottom of the totem pole. And if you were, you were in danger of going home. As the game evolved, more and more students wanted to play. Before long, we would have waiting lists of players just aching to give it a shot. One night, 40 people played the game. And that was incredibly challenging, but fulfilling to host. We decided to turn this game into a show. I handpicked players from my university and we played the game on camera. We edited it as a show and released it to YouTube. You, the viewers, turned this game into a family. You poured in by the thousands to watch this game and play it online. You gave the people on camera and behind it something to look forward to. You gave this game life. And now, two seasons later, you're growing this family larger than it has ever been before. I graduated from college, we added a few amazing people to the production team, and we decided to open up season three casting to the entire country. No more handpicking a cast from my university. You sent in applications after applications, making our job really hard. <laughs> now, people from the Total Pole family can get on camera. And with that, we've pushed our game to a whole new level. With players flying from places coast to coast, Los Angeles to Orlando, to compete in a once in a lifetime game. What they don't know is we also cast four players to join them as soon as the game starts. Four people will have to play the game with someone from their past and with them, two iconic returning players from seasons one and two are back for redemption to overcome the baggage they left behind. 14 players are about to compete in a strategy game like they've never experienced. Everyone is carrying baggage, but only one can win. Who will let their baggage weigh them down? And who will overcome it and be the ultimate top of the totem pole? Welcome to The Totem Pole, Season 3. What's up, my name is Derek, I'm 26 years old, I'm from Wood River, Illinois, and I work in management. I'm here to win, it's just that simple. I want to win the game, I came to Total Blow. I did not come to make friends, I came to win, it's just that simple. I am a father to a four-year-old boy, his name is Aiden. He is my reason, my why, my passion for everything that I do in life. I don't make a step without thinking about him first. My main focus in life is just making him proud and giving him everything that I didn't have growing up. So. If if that takes me being at the bottom ends to do that, then I'm willing to literally do whatever to make Aiden happy. Y'all looking at me, okay. Hi, my name is Katessa Dupree. I'm from Crockett, Arkansas. I'm 22 years old. Um, wait. <laughs> Hold up. I'm in college right now. I'm studying psychology and I'm minor in theater. What I want to do with that, honestly, I don't know right now. I should get it together because, you know, I'm like a senior, so. <laughs> I don't know. To be honest, I want to work in a prison, y'all. You know, I know that sounds a little extreme, but you know, it is what it is at this point. You know, I gotta work, you know, I gotta do my thing. <laughs> I hate my Oh my god, I'm so ashamed. <laughs> Why are you looking? <laughs> I'm so uncomfortable. Okay, I'm hot. These lies get to me. Oh my god. My game plan, y'all. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna act really chill at first. I hope that don't get me in trouble. But my game plan is to just act chill like I don't care and hopefully they get me through the finals. We'll see. Hello, my name is Shane. I'm 23 and I'm from Los Angeles, California. I currently work in reality television. I've worked on a handful of different shows and I went to school specifically for reality television, uh, mainly broadcast and broadcast production. That's the same thing. <laughs> Some that you may have heard of. I've worked on Big Brother, uh, Celebrity Big Brother, Love Island, 
Um, I worked on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. It's just a passion of mine that I'm super excited to be working in and I can't wait to see where it goes from here and how it can help shape and form the rest of the industry. Uh, but I also wanted to see if I could handle it in front of the camera as well. See if I have what it takes to make it to the end. I'm Sabrina, I'm 27, I'm from San Antonio, Texas. I'm a physical therapist and I'm really excited to be cast for the totem pole because I really like playing these games and I wanna show everybody that I can win again. So last year I played another live reality game in Ohio called Big Brother Columbus season seven and I won. I love uh, being around other people. Um, I'm with other people all day long for work, um, not just my patients, but other coworkers that work in the same building as I do. I like competing in any way, fashion, or form, including these live reality games, and so I wanted to, to give this a shot and see if I could do really well. Hi, my name is Connor. I'm 21 years old. I'm originally from North Carolina, but I currently live in Minnesota. I applied, just like, you know what, I'm just gonna do this. Um, I'm not really spending go very far or whatever, but I'm like, you know what, might as well try and just see what happens and had the experience of trying to get on one of these. And then I like, kept getting passed and passed. I'm like, wait, hold up, what's, what's happening here? Kept going further and further and further. And then when I, got, when I got the call from Wesley, I was like, oh Jesus, here we go. I gotta start preparing. I gotta like, mentally, physically, everything. I mean, physically, I tried, but it didn't really work. I didn't really last that long, I went to the gym like twice, but I was just like, oh my God, oh my God, this just really happened, really, really happened. I was just like, oh, what do I do, what do I do, what do I do, but yeah. So um, when I was eight years old, I was diagnosed with high-functioning autism, and for me, like, growing up, you know, there's not a lot of whole representation of autism, and I'm social, 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 or at least try to be, and, but um, I feel like I wanted to come here because I wanted to show people this much broader spectrum of like of what autism can be and what autism is and so that's one of the big reasons for coming here and honestly I want to show people that like I can do well and I can do well without anyone even knowing like my history or like my, what, I, what I have whatever I can do well just being myself and I'm confident I can do that. Hi I'm Asher Henderson I'm from Searcy Arkansas and I'm studying elementary education. I really care about kids and I'm really passionate about learning and teaching and so it's just what I want to do. I've been a fan of Totem Pole since the first season, and I lo I've loved getting to watch it, and I was just super excited to get to be a part of it. And one of my biggest fears going into the game is making somebody mad at me, because I really hate when people are mad at me, and I just want to make everybody happy, but at the same time, I'm here to play a game. I'm not here to make friends. Hi, my name is Jada Robinson, and I am a public relations major, and currently, I am a TikTok Genius, goddess, the best of the best, the best you've ever seen. Charlie D'Amelio, I'm coming for your career. My connection with the totem pole is that originally it started being filmed with people at my current university, and I knew the people that were in season one, and so I went to the season one premiere, and I thought the show was absolutely incredible, and I got the best opportunity to sit in the back of the room with the actual director, producer, and everything of the show, and it was incredible, and I got to actually meet him and sit with him and watch the premiere, and from then I was hooked, and I've been trying to get on this show ever since. Hey y'all, my name is Josh, I'm 25 years old, and I'm from Orlando, Florida. I'm a huge Totem Pole super fan. I love everything about Totem Pole, been watching since season one, have so many favorites, love everything about it. I'm a photographer in my daily life, that's my job. I take photos pretty much every single day of thousands of people, it keeps me busy, and it pays the bills. When I found out that I was cast on the show, I I honestly couldn't believe it. It's been my dream to play games like this since, you know, I was in middle school. I never thought I'd get the chance to be on TV, to be on YouTube, and just really play games and compete and do what I love to do, because I've just been in this community for so long. So to get that opportunity, I was really excited to dive in and see how I'm going to do. Hey guys, um, my name is Jackie. I am 20 years old. I go to the University of North Texas. I used to play college soccer at the University of AM Texarkana. I quit after my second season. I didn't like the school, I didn't like the people, everyone was really fake, so I decided to leave. Um, now I'm just a student at the University of North Texas, 
and I'm following my career path. I'm trying to be a screenwriter. In my free time, I like to go to concerts. I've been to ACL, you know, I've seen Hector Orange County, I've seen Lizzo, I've seen Billie Eilish. But now I'm here, I'm at the totem pole, and I'm ready to compete. I'm ready to come out on top. Hi, my name is Madison. Oh, oh I forgot my last name. <laughs> Hi, my name is Madison Rowland. I am from Dallas, Texas. I am studying um, undergraduate level healthcare management and master level information systems. And I'm in both undergraduate and master's, which is really hectic with information systems strictly being online. There are some people in season two that I didn't like, and I just wanted to do so much better than them. <laughs> These people are weird. And I feel like I'm distancing myself, and I'm like, no, come on, Madison, you have to push forward. Be yourself. Get out there. That's not me. <laughs> This season, we're gonna shake some things up. We all are carrying baggage. So walking into the house, I noticed that on the totem pole structure, there's 14 spots. However, there's only 10 blocks on the table. So I know there's gonna be some people coming in, but I'm really excited to see who's gonna come to the door. Some of you have baggage that are going to roll through the front door from your past, or people who have a past in this game, and they need to come back and reclaim their baggage. Who will you be playing this game with? And what twist will this bring out into the game that you've never seen before? Just revealed the theme was baggage, and honestly, I don't really care about the theme because I'm, I'm just here to win. So the theme could just go out of the window because I'm not here for the game. I mean, <laughs> is that someone from my past is going to come in that I don't get along with or like. And honestly, that scares me a lot. My ex not finna walk through the door, is it? Maybe. <laughs> uh -uh, we can't have that up in here because it's gonna be World War Three. I'm just saying. Before we can get this game started, we have to have a full cast. So, let's roll them in. Come on in. <gasps> hey Connor, miss me? Hey, I'm Nicole Spears. I'm from Indianapolis, Indiana. I'm getting ready to turn 37. I work in um, healthcare policy, healthcare IT. I have three teenagers, two boys and a girl, and I usually host exchange students every year. The strategy walking in the door, knowing I'm probably gonna be a little bit older than most people, is to just be open. Um, trying to talk to everyone, not um, letting them think that I feel out of place, and also not letting them think that I'm um, even thinking about age as an important factor. I'm hoping if I don't bring it up, that other people don't bring it up. And a lot of times if you get people to talk about themselves, the focus kind of moves away from you. Coming into the season, I knew I was baggage for someone. And when I walk through the door, I see Connor sitting there and I immediately know this is from past games I've played with him. I play online reality games in a community online. And I met Connor about a year ago in a game where we were working together in a survivor game. Cole walks in and I remember, dang, let's just say when I got to play with her, I was booted pretty, pretty, pretty fast. The past year I've played two games with Connor and I've screwed him over in both and sent him out the door. I don't want him to do the same thing to me this season. So I play a lot of these online games and when I see her walk in, the first thing I think is like, I've never really had the brightest picture of Nicole as a person because quite frankly, I can't stay on a game long enough to really get to know her. She just looks weird and I don't think I could be work with her. So, I don't. <laughs> so you don't plan on working with her? No, like, I don't know. She just seems like, 
I don't know, she's weird. I don't relate to her. <laughs> Hi guys! Hi! Hello! Um, so I walk in and right there is Jackie. Literally the last person I would want to see in this house. See him walk through the door and I really don't want to make eye contact with him. I don't want it to be awkward. I'm hoping people aren't noticing me. I'm looking away so I don't know what everyone's reaction is honestly. Hi, my name is Luke Gary. I'm 20 years old. I'm from Fort Worth, Texas, and I'm a freelance choreographer. But the first season of Totem Pole came out, and I saw it on Twitter. Like, some random person retweeted it, and I saw it on Twitter. And I started clicking through the videos, I started watching the videos, and I was like, oh, hold on. They might be onto something. So I started watching the shows. I hit that subscribe button. You already know that was the first thing that I did. And then the rest is history. I just fell in love with the game, and I saw that season three was casting. And I knew instantly that I literally had to submit my application because this was this was the moment. This was it. I'm ready to get my judge. It's my camera time. So me and Luke, we used to be really good friends. Like, we did everything together. He would have dinners with my family. We kind of had like a falling out and it really broke our friendship and we ended up distancing each other. But now we're here and I'm pretty sure he's going to come after me. I am gonna be targeted by him for sure. Oh, Chile, Luke, um, first of all, he walked in like he owned the place. That's all I gotta say. I was like, who are you? Because, honey, nobody cannot out-own me. I feel like he was trying to take my shine or something. Like, he walked in there like, um, I'm the queen of this house. No, honey, no, you're not. But you know, that's just me though. I don't know what other people thought about him, but he, he walked in like he owned the place and he did not. Welcome to the cast, but we've got to add a few more people. So from last season, someone who strategized all season long, but came so short oh. from <laughs> the crown. Please welcome. I found out that two people returning to the game, I was like freaking out. Cause I'm like, obviously I'm a totem pole super fan, so I'm excited to meet them. But at the same time, I'm like, who the heck are they bringing back? Guys, there are no words. I'm nervous, I'm worried. Like I said, I know some of the people who played this game in past seasons. So, <laughs> and I, I'm just gonna be honest with you. I'm, I'm, I'm mortified. Anyone who walks through that door could be someone that I have beef with in real life. And I ain't trying to do that. I ain't trying to mess with all this game. I just wanted to have some fun. What, what are you doing? <gasps> what? I'm back, baby. <laughs> Season two, I, uh, I frankly killed it. Like, I, uh, I'm not trying to toot my own horn too much, but I think I played um, a pretty good game. I think in the end, what killed me was I didn't um, basically get my alliances in writing. Like, that bit me in the butt in the end, um, even though I was just like right there. Um, so I think this year my baggage is like uh, coming so close, and this is this is redemption right here. Everybody is cheering, um, and that was great, but at the same time, I'm like, there's some people here that definitely see me as a threat. I want to see Jace return, because he seemed a little snobby. Like, he knows that he's going to win. Like, he's up here, he needs to bring me down, like, a few notches. So, yeah. Um, I see Jace walk in through the door, and I'm thinking, farmer's in the house. <laughs> That's literally what I'm thinking. <laughs> I know goodness well if Wes don't come out here right now and throw me out to the lake and forget about me and bring someone else. Okay, so does anybody else want to be on the... Hello? Cheryl, are you ready to go? Let's go. Let's join the show right now. I'm jumping in the lake and I'm just going to drown because I don't have time for this. How long before they just like say, listen, this dude's got to go? But it's time to bring in 
the queen herself. Love it. No. Talk to me. Come on in. No. I'm hurt. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Me and these two girls are literally jumping out of our seats because we're so excited. Hey guys, you already know who I am. I don't need an introduction, but I'm gonna give you one just because they told me to. So I'm Kadia and the queen is back and I'm ready to take it all this time. I ain't playing no games, no jokes, and that's all period. So I'm ready to play. Come for me if you want to, but you're going down. Y'all thought y'all saw something in season one? Get ready for season three, because I ain't come here to play with nobody. I'm here to make it to the top and only the top. Season one, what can I tell you about season one? I was, exactly. <laughs> season one, I kind of went in like with big doughy baby eyes and I was just kind of like, oh, I, like, I want to like get to know everyone. But I didn't really have a strategy coming in. I don't really know anyone, but I am a lot more confident for season three, and I'm here to play. Season one, I was a little bit too nice. This time, I'm here for all the marbles, honey. She's in the same boat as me. She thinks she's gonna have a target on her back. She kills the social game, and so I really want to be sure me and her are um, tight throughout this process. Um, so if there's people maybe I can't win over, um, that maybe she can get to. So Jace and Kadia walked in the door, literally my two favorite totem pole players of all time. Bro, I was hyped. I was literally living for this. I knew instantly when they walked in the door, I want to work with them. I cannot believe it. Kadia just walked through those doors. Ah! I'm so excited. I cannot wait to see where this game goes. I was a huge fan of Kadia. I still have memes and gifts saved on my phone of her. Wasn't a big fan of Jace. He got fifth place that season. Um, we'll see how that works out for him this season. I don't know, but uh, I don't know if I'll work with him or not. We'll see. Two big personalities, two alpha males. I don't think you guys know how much I love the queen herself, Kadia. Kadia. Like you, when you see her, when you see her walk into your room, you put respect on her name. She is a totem pole legend. We're both returning players, so I feel like they're gonna try and come for us first. So I'm gonna look out for him if he look out for me. Players are competing for a one-of-a-kind totem pole prize package. The winner will receive a cash prize, merch, and their own totem pole spin-off show that will air after season three. Here's how the game works. Every round has five events that occur, and always in this order. At the beginning of the round, the players will compete to be the top of the totem pole. The winner is safe from elimination. And with that safety, the top of the totem pole has a lot of power for the round. The second event that happens is the placement. The top of the totem pole must publicly rank every other player on the totem pole from top to bottom. The lower you're placed on the totem pole, the more danger you're in. The players ranked in the bottom five are in the most danger. Next. One player will become the switch. They have the duty to switch two positions on the totem pole. For the first round, the players will vote who should have the title of the switch. Whoever gets the most votes must come up to the totem pole and publicly switch two positions. The only player off limits is the top of the totem pole. Will you switch yourself or an ally out of the bottom five? Or would you put your target at the very bottom of the totem pole? All other rankings will stay the same. Then, the fourth event in the round means the bottom of the totem pole is on the hot seat. 
someone will go home during this stage of the round. The bottom of the totem pole must make a choice. They have to put their trust in another player. They will choose someone to be their defender. The defender must make a choice. They can either save the bottom of the totem pole or take power. If they choose to save, the bottom of the totem pole will have a second chance at surviving the round. But this season is the season of baggage. If the defender wants to save, they must put their game on the line. When a defender selects to save the bottom of the totem pole to give them a second chance, it will unleash a twist on the game and someone will go home. But with every save option, there is baggage that the defender will have to overcome. This baggage could end the defender's game. If the defender doesn't want to unleash a twist and baggage, they can just simply choose to take power. If they take power, the bottom of the totem pole is automatically eliminated from the game. No second chance, they're out. And with every power card comes an advantage in the game. Will the defender choose to save their friend and put their game on the line, unleashing a twist, baggage, and an elimination? Or will they turn their back and take power? After someone is eliminated, we will move on to the final stage of the round, the vote. Every player in the bottom five of the totem pole will now be up for the vote. No one will have immunity, not even the defender if they're in the bottom five. Someone from the bottom five will be the second person out of the game. The player that receives the most votes will be eliminated. Two players will go home every single round. Then we'll start from the top and do it again. This season, will players let their baggage weigh them down or will they overcome their baggage and be the ultimate top of the totem pole? <laughs> so now that there's the safe cards and we know everything, there is baggage that comes with the safe cards. I don't know if that's personally gonna affect me because I have baggage. I don't know how it's gonna affect everyone else. I'm really scared because this is the first time there's gonna be an extra twist when someone gets saved. So in the past seasons, the defender really just had to choose, am I gonna save someone or am I gonna take a power? Pretty simple. But this season, the defender might actually have a negative consequence to saving someone. So I can't just count on someone liking me uh, to keep me safe in this game. You really have to convince someone that their life could be put on the line to take the risk to save you. So that changes the game dramatically because the first two seasons, all those saves cards were used because the defender who had it, they were safe. So of course you're gonna pick save because you both are safe. But now you're not guaranteed that safety. So I think this is gonna really shake up the game. I feel like this leads a lot of people to potentially want to take power now in the game instead of just saving their allies immediately, which could lead to some messy situations and hopefully not the demise of my own game early on. Your first challenge is called carry your baggage. The way this challenge works is you will start at the start line. Each of you have a bag. That bag has 10 pounds of weight in it. When I say go, you will have to get to the finish line. The last player to the finish line must give their baggage to another player. The first player who passes the finish line with their baggage will have to give another 10 pounds to another player. We will do this over and over again until we have a winner. Make sense? I have asthma and you're gonna make me run up this hill? <laughs> Not only do I gotta walk up this hill, I really don't like walking up any hill on a regular day. I got to carry bags too with stuff in it. And I'm not feeling it. I really can't. <sighs> I really don't know how I'm gonna do. Honestly, I'm. A... I don't 
don't think it's fair. But you know what? They already came up with these challenges. I can't do nothing about it. I'm not gonna complain about it. I'm gonna just try my best. So they announced the first challenge, and they say it's gonna be weights, and it's 10 pounds for every bag. And well, I weigh 90 pounds, so pretty sure I'm the lightest one there, and I'm pretty sure I'm the weakest one there. So I'm not excited for this challenge because I'm weak. <laughs> And I don't know if I'll be able, I don't know how far I'm gonna make it, but I'm gonna try my best. As long as I don't come in last, I think I'll do good. Um, my strategy going to the first challenge, I don't wanna win it. I wanna like throw it to somebody else. Um, to be honest, I came here, you know, thinking uh, I'm gonna get out the first round because I had midterms going on, so I was trying to get out, honey. But now, you know, I'm just like, okay, like, I don't want to be at the bottom. I want to be in, like, the middle. Because I don't want to have to choose who goes on a totem pole. Because I want everybody to like me. I mean, who won't like me, you know? And, like, if I have to put everybody on the totem pole, then that means I have to pick favorites. And I don't like doing that. Get set. this season like she done put me through so much but I hate it at the same time I really okay y'all I was fine at the beginning of the week and then somehow I tore a muscle I really wasn't doing anything and then they told me I had to wear a boot and I have these little crutches and honestly I'm afraid that this will hinder me and people are gonna be like uh uh we need to get her out but I'm not just gonna sit here and be like my foot hurts I have a boot on no I'm gonna still fight as much as I can I'm gonna still play the game as hard as I can just cuz I have this little boot on my foot don't mean nothing so don't think I'm an easy target just cuz I have a little object on my foot I'm still coming for every single one of y'all what y'all probably gonna have this little clown music playing again I'm not here for it <sighs> Unfortunately, Kadia, you were last, and you have to give your baggage to another player. Okay. Ooh. I really don't know anyone except, like, who. <laughs> okay. All right, what's your name? Me? Yes. Nicole. Nicole, I'm sorry. That's I don't fine. Really know I'll, give it, I'll give 20 pounds next time to somebody. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, Kadia, you, you can go up to the balcony. <sighs> and first was Luke. You must now give 10 pounds to another player. Who are you giving additional baggage? Um, I don't know everyone really well yet. Um, I'm really sorry to this individual, but I'm gonna have to give an extra 10 pounds to Nicole. Bring it on. I can't go fast anyway, so I'm taking one for the team. Oh. Yeah, I'll pray for you. <laughs> this hill is trash. I know, right? Well, unfortunately, you came in last place, and you must give your baggage <laughs> to another player. Okay. Um. I wish I was paying more attention to see how everybody was doing and who, all the girls look so sad <laughs> and scared. They give it to you, Derek, because I works. think you can carry it. Let's get it. That's the twin. <laughs> Sorry. That's right. They're not even on 10? No, no, I can't do that for you. <laughs> Him in first again. I'm leading this game. I'm not surprised. 
who are you giving an extra 10 pounds? I see Luke is doing really well. So I'm thinking people are gonna want him to be an alliance. So maybe I have to work with my baggage to make it to the top. Um, this person I haven't really talked to that much, so I'm sorry, but I'm gonna have to give it to Asher. I don't know if Luke has a problem with me or what to give me 10 pounds first. I feel like there are other people who are bigger threats in this game. Can I get a close up on Asher? Oh lord! No, no, no. Are we coming in hot? <laughs> Fucking Luke, he's gonna pay for this. Trust me. For the first two rounds, Luke's winning. Like I can't, I can't seem to pass Luke in the end. Like we're head to head, fighting for the finish line, and Luke's beating me both rounds. So fine, I'll throw this challenge to Asher, and I'll pass this way to Luke. Carry it on, Luke. On your mark, it's set, go. Ah! So I literally crossed the finish line first again, and I turn around and I see Asher and Derek are the two in the in the behind, and I see Derek stop and let Asher go in front of him so he can go last. And I'm thinking, dude, what are you doing? What what move are you trying to make? What is your game plan? Derek's gonna be a physical threat just because he's so big, but I also think he could be a social threat because he seems to be friends with everyone already. Derek, yes, you came in last. I did, and you have to give your baggage to another player. My pleasure. Be? So, I am a strong believer in karma's kiss. So, with that being said, Luke, let's add thirty to that team you got. Okay. Woo! Okay. Karma's Ooh. kiss. Dude, what are you doing? What is your strategy? What are you thinking? There's strategy there. I'm sure there is. I don't know what it is. He didn't give it to me though, so I'm still rocking and rolling. First again, and you have to give 10 pounds to another player. Who's it gonna be? Um, I'm gonna have to give the extra 10 pounds to Jackie. <laughs> this feels like no joke. For real. Oh, thank you. Uh, I'm missing. Oh, the love! Luke, this time you came in last. What can I say? You have to give all of your baggage to another player. Who's it gonna be? Um, I'm gonna have to give it to Asher. I'm sorry, girl. I don't know why Luke is giving me all this weight, but I'm definitely not gonna make it past this round. Got eliminated from the challenge. <sighs> Not so happy about that. However, I do know that now that I'm out, this gives me time to go and talk to Kadia, someone who I could see as a potential ally. Hey, Jackie, you won that one. Good job, Hi. 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 I'm looking down and I see I see Jada next to me, and I'm like, no, I'm not gonna give it to Jada. Then there's Connor. I'm not gonna give it to him either. He's really sweet. I see Josh. I'm like. He might throw this one, so I'm good. 
Um, Sabrina, she's kind of in the back, so didn't really see her. But then at the very, very end, I see Farmers Only Jace. I'm thinking, he's strong. I know he's over there plowing the field, so I'm going to just give it to him because I know he can carry the weight. Who are you giving guidance to? I'm going to give it to Jace just because I know he's strong. It's just because he's strong, okay? No, that's <laughs> Jackie gives me 10 pounds, like, right off the bat, and I'm like, I, where is this coming from? Like, you, I don't know why you just, like, whopping 10 pounds, like, it's not bad, and I'm still able to, like, keep all of my plan, but at the same time, I'm like, why are you coming for me? Like, right off the bat, there's other people, you know what I'm saying? And she's all like, oh, I'm sorry, but, like, no, don't, like, I don't know. People are giving weight to the same people and it's gonna cause a domino effect and the next person to get weight is probably gonna go out. After each person was handed the weight, I decided it was best for my social game to help them throughout the challenge and root for them and carry their weights with them. Dane is super nice. He's been helping me carry my weight down the hill and I he doesn't have to do it, but he's doing it and I think he's really nice. Derek helping me and throwing the challenge feels game related, but I feel like Shane's just doing it because he's a nice person. Are you sure? Okay. Uh, <laughs> Asher, you came in last, and unfortunately, you're out. But you have to give your bag as soon as the players. Um, <laughs> Challenge continues on. I notice people aren't looking at me when they're deciding who to give the weight to. I think that's a perfect example as to why my social game is starting to work because no one's looking at me as a threat and rather an ally that can help them in the game and in challenges. I'm going to give it to Jackie just because I don't know you that well. You came in first, and you have to give 10 pounds to another player. Who's it going to be? Um, <laughs> you don't have to. You don't have to. You can put them in the bag if you want. Wait, they're lying. Thank you. You're welcome. Go! Give all of your baggage to another plate. Who's it gonna be? I don't know. <laughs> this is really hard. Um, I'm just gonna go with Jace <laughs> again. All right, give all your I'm bags. sorry. Oh, I, I, <laughs> you're strong. You're so, I believe oh, in you. You're strong. <laughs> A hundred pounds? No! It's frustrating to me because um, I I think there needs to be strategy and I don't think you should apologize for it. She like gave it to me and was like, I'm sorry, I'm I'm like, give it to somebody like that you have an issue with. Like if you're gonna make an enemy, uh, make an enemy. Jada, you came in first. Who okay. are you giving baggage? Guys, I made it in first place. Guys, if you guys 
look, look at my legs, okay? They were in full on split mode. I was sprinting for my life. I was like, come on, let's go. We can do this. Jackie has nothing on you. And I passed her in and I got first place. I'm so excited, guys. This is amazing. I'm gonna give it to Connor. <laughs> Feeling too hot. Set, go. Are you Mark? Get set, go. I'm like, da -da 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 -da. <laughs> <laughs> you came in last, and you have to give all of your baggage to another player. Who's it gonna be? What would I find now? I don't know any of you, so I feel really bad. Um, you got that extra weight. I'm about to give this to you. Yeah, come on. Uh, so. I'm not the last one yet. People keep getting last and last and last. You know what? I get second to last, third to last, but I'm not last. Maybe I can keep going and keep going. And then, Jace decides to give me a hundred pounds of weight. And I'm just like, all right, let's get to this ranking because I'm just ready for it at this point. Because How do you expect me? You see these arms? You see these arms? How do you expect me to carry a hundred pounds? Man, I probably weigh about a hundred pounds and I can't even walk up a flight of steps without going <laughs> Man! Adios. Adios. Good luck everybody. Good job, Jay. Good job, Jay. Oh, hey! Really? Good job, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> and the winner this time was John. No way! Oh yeah, John! Oh yeah, yeah, pounds of baggage to give another player who's gonna be in town. Alright. Um, Josh, I'm already out of it. Don't give it to me. Okay. No, no. Because then, like, if you, like, if you, when you get out, no, it'll probably, domino I'm, effect, I'm remember? Not, I'm really okay, then, I guess, Timmy. Yeah, sure. Yeah. 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 To Madison. Madison. Yeah. Damn, <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't want to win and wants all these. Like, yeah. <laughs> Oh gosh, I just went. <laughs> I don't know. My back literally just went. I just that red. Alright, Connor! Yeah! You get two, I get two. Um, yeah, I think that one's really heavy. Oh, yeah. Right. Two. Um, you go, I'm sorry. Sorry. I pretend I did not see it. <laughs> this man gives me over 100 pounds. That's more than, that's more than I weigh as a human being. I have to carry two times my own weight because this man thought it was okay. Dude, I gave you like 10 pounds, okay? Don't. Why? This is such an overreaction to what I gave this man. I cannot believe this. I am coming for you, Connor. Watch your back because I'm coming for you. On this challenge, nobody is handing me weights. So I'm like, okay, um, maybe I can get through this. And I thought I was going to get like the 30 pound weights that this guy named Connor was going to give to me. But honestly, I low-key think he had a crush on me. So, honey, I wasn't getting no weights. Wait, you think Connor has a crush on you? Yes, Connor has a crush on me. But how do you that know? Just, huh? How do you know? Honey, he didn't give me the weights. And, like, he just acted like he had a crush on me. So, you know, I'm just saying, I mean, he's really cool. Okay.
You got this, baby girl. Nah, bro. <laughs> Tessa. Yeah. Ooh, Tessa. No! Who are you giving baggage to? Um, I'll give it to Josh because he's a guy. <laughs> I'll take him. Okay. You got it, Josh. I just cannot. Josh. Josh. Anyway. Big up the ears. Don't judge me. Just let me get up. Just let me do what I need to do, okay? I got these these boots was made for walking. That's what's happening right now. And I'm trying. This man Connor done done me dirty. It just guys, just let it happen, okay? I'll be up there. Be up there to the finish line. Don't worry about me. Shane is amazing. He's wonderful. He's coming to help me right now to carry my heavy load. And it's just, it's incredible. And I just, I realize at this moment that I'm gonna make it. And now I have a friend out of the situation. So let's see how that goes. Um, I'm gonna give it to Josh. It's okay. Yeah, just leave him there. I'm a. <laughs> <laughs> that was true. I'm not mad. I promise. I know it was either me or Shane. Good job. I think she's just helping. And the winner of that round was Josh. All right, Josh. Who are you giving your bags to? I'm going to give, I mean, do you have? I have 10, you can give it to me. 10, I'll give him the yeah. 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 Muscle out, muscle out, let's go. <laughs> this is the final round of this challenge. What? No way. The person who crosses this finish line is the winner oh my of God. this challenge and is the first top of the total. Can I do it? <laughs> <laughs> There's no way. Let's go! Oh, There's no way. Power three. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Four, I'm like, I'm almost... I'm almost about to win this thing. Like, I did not expect me to be almost, you know, to almost win. But you know what? It's low-key kind of fun. I want to win now. So, we'll see. Um, I know I'm probably not going to win at this point. There's other people who are faster than me who even have more weight than I do right now. And so I know that I need to make some kind of deal to keep myself safe. So I grabbed Tessa who has been winning rounds and just let her know that if, if she wins, then maybe she'll keep me safe. And then if I win, I can keep her safe. And hopefully that'll keep me off the bottom of the totem pole. That many of us left and Sabrina pulls me and Tessa aside and it's like, hey, let's make an alliance. And I'm like, okay, we can do that. I don't have any alliances right now, so I was like, okay, what can do? What's the harm in doing this alliance with us three girls? No, I can run faster than the two girls that's left. I mean, that's on period. So, should I throw it and like make it like, look, alliance with them at the bottom? Like, hey, you know, if you take this, you know, what should I do? But I don't know, cause they low key run kind of slow, so I think I'm gonna run past them either way. I don't know, y'all. Congratulations, Tessa! Start counting down or whatever, and I just take off running, y'all. I'm like, hey! You know? <laughs> y'all start running, boy. And like, my pants are falling down again. Like, I'm so sick of these pants at this point. Why did I even wear this outfit, y'all? Okay, but I just start running, and I made it, and I won first place, bro. And then I started thinking, I'm really gonna have to place these people <laughs> on the totem pole and they're gonna hate me. Congratulations! Yeah, good job. That was awesome. I would help you. Okay, 
Walking up the stairs, I mean, I'm just ready for the next instruction. And then looking down, I see an exposed card and I immediately snatch it up and put it in my pocket. Um, I'm looking around hoping nobody saw me, but I'm not quite sure if it's just my secret or not. Walking back up from the challenge, I noticed Sabrina grab a card sitting on one of the tables that nobody else noticed. An exposed card out in the open. I was pretty sure somebody's gonna get this card and somebody must have just placed it there when I walked up the stairs because there's no way it was missed. This exposed card that I just found is a total public vote. So if I play that card, then it's gonna make everybody vote out loud in front of everybody. I hope Tessa keeps her word that she'll keep me safe, but I don't know if she will. How will Tessa place her totem pole? Will Sabrina play her total public vote and expose everyone? Will the defender choose to unleash baggage on the game or will they take power? Who will be the first players eliminated from the totem pole? Season three. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to, you can subscribe so that you never miss an episode and you can watch these other episodes or other videos here. See you next week on Totem Tuesday.